Welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is backed by popular demand, and she's also going to be one of the seven chefs on the special Christmas Day cook-along that's going to take place right here on this YouTube channel, Chef AJ, at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific time on Christmas Day 2020. If you'd like to cook along with us, please be sure you're subscribed to my newsletter because we are going to be sending out the shopping list and the ingredient list in advance and giving out the recipes during the cook along. We had so many people cooking along with Thanksgiving Day and sending us their pictures, which we appreciate. So we thought we would do it again. And the reason we do it on the holidays is because not everybody gets to be with their family and the people that are alone really appreciated having this special broadcast to look forward to. So without further ado, it is my friend, Kathy Fisher, who is going to be making two wonderful recipes that are perfect for the holidays or anytime, a pumpkin walnut cornbread and a cauliflower soup. So without further ado, here's Kathy. Hi, AJ. Thank you so much for having me on your show again. I love being here. And hi to everybody who are repeat watchers and always show up for my videos. Thank you so much. Um, today, I'm going to make, as AJ said, uh, two recipes, a soup and a cornbread just seem nice and cozy for this time of year. And since I don't do like a meat centerpiece dish at my holiday table, sometimes I like a nice hearty soup. Um, instead. So this is just one option and I've already got my pan, my pot heating up here um, so we can get going. And these two recipes are not in my cookbook, Straight Up Food, um, but they are on my website, straightupfood.com. They're newer recipes. My book's been out for about four years, so um, they're not in the book, but check out the book if you want more of my recipes. It's on Amazon. It's on my website, straightupfood.com. And it's got, it's a great beginner cookbook. It's got lots of pictures. It lays flat. Um, it's a very user-friendly cookbook. If you or someone you know is starting to get into this way of eating, which is 100% plants, no added salt, oil, or sugar. And for me, I don't do any gluten either. All right, so if you guys have any questions as I'm going along, you know, just um, ask and Chef AJ will let me know what your question is and then I can answer it live. Absolutely, just so you know, I got a confirmation from Charles that the sound is fine. So, oh, so great. far, there's no questions, but I'll monitor the chat and when they okay. are, I'll wave my arm like this so that I don't interrupt you. Okay, and you guys can ask me questions about anything you want, the recipes I'm making, um, anything about my, my journey or whatever, I like questions, so feel free. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the cauliflower soup because it's gotta cook a little while. I already made the cornbread muffins earlier, so they're already done, um, but we're gonna start with the soup here. If you know my recipes, you know I like things super easy. I don't like a lot of weird ingredients. So everything you see here will be pretty familiar, I believe. And that makes things easier. So what I'm doing is just heating up my soup pot here and I'm putting, I always have a little bit of water by me when I'm um, cooking on the stove top. I use water instead of oil. I don't use any oil whatsoever in my cooking. And I just use a little water instead so the pot can heat up with something in it. If you wanna use vegetable stock, you can do that too. But I find that water works just great. And by the end of having all the um, vegetables and the herbs and spices and everything in there, it tastes great. So. I just to save a little money and don't buy veg stock. If you like to make veg stock at home yourself, that's great too. All right, so cauliflower soup. We are gonna start with one medium onion here that I have chopped up, one and a half cups of uh, chopped celery and one and a half cups chopped or sliced carrots. And I'm just gonna put them all in the pot here Kathy, do you ever use your Instant Pot for recipes like this? Pardon me? Do you ever use your Instant Pot for recipes like this? I'm gonna turn my volume up. Um, you know, uh, I don't use, I'm so weird. I don't use my Instant Pot for 
recipes like this, actually. I just use it to make beans, potatoes, rice and beans, kind of the basics. I don't know why that is. Um, I'm just so used to doing it this way, I guess. And I mostly cook this way because I not everybody has an Instant Pot. Um, so no, but I do have some recipes that are Instant Pot friendly. And I usually put those instructions down below the recipe in the notes section on my website. Um, okay. I'm not crazy about this. It matches my soup pot, but I much prefer my old ugly wooden spoon. So <laughs> I'm gonna use that instead. All right. So I haven't added any more water in the bottom as the vegetables cook, the water inside of them is released. And so the less water, the better, that just brings out more flavor. If we overdo it with the water, then we're boiling or steaming and there's a little less flavor. Um, but if you do get nervous and things look like they're overly browning, you can always turn it down a bit or you can add a touch more water. So the goal here is we're just trying to soften these veggies up. We're trying to calm down the bitterness of those onions and bring out the sweetness. And I use a yellow onion. You can use a white onion, a red onion. It doesn't really matter. And one and a half each of the celery and the carrot. Um, I think that was about two cel large celery ribs and about three carrots, medium carrots. Okay, so while this is finishing up, um, I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit more. This is called sauteing, which just means cooking while stirring. And you can kind of take your eye off of it for a minute. You just don't wanna do it for too long because you don't want it to burn. So while that's getting ready, I'm gonna get my fresh garlic ready. I have some cloves here. I have them all peeled except for this one because I always like to show people who might not know one nice easy way to get the little paper off. So this is called the silicone garlic sleeve and you just put your garlic clove with the paper on it in there and then you just roll it. And sometimes the paper comes right off. Sometimes you have to help it a little bit like that. And then I like to cut this little crusty end off. Okay, so once you have, I'm going for about one tablespoon of chopped, finely chopped garlic. And I might have a little bit extra here, but that's okay. And you can chop your garlic with your chef's knife, or you can use something like this, which is specifically for chopping garlic, which I love. This is a Tupperware product. It is on my website store at straightupfood.com if you wanna check it out. Um, so that just sits in there and then you put your garlic cloves in. And this is a great way to chop a bunch of garlic at once. Gar chopping garlic is my least favorite cooking task. So I love this thing. And then once they're all in there, you just pull. And the more you pull, the finer it gets chopped. All right. Take the blade out. These are my magnetic measuring spoons. I just love them because they stick together and they have two ends. This makes a great gift as well for someone in your life who likes cooking. So I'm just gonna measure out about one. I did pretty good here, about one tablespoon. And we usually add the garlic a little later because it does, it's a little more delicate than onions and it can burn. So we usually get the onions and um, carrots and celery going first and then we add the garlic. If you only had dried garlic, you could use that as well. Maybe like a teaspoon. Okay, so, and I'm gonna check my recipe sheets as I go just so I am not missing anything. Oh, and I already missed step one. Um, <laughs> which was to get the water and the cashews ready, which is optional if you wanna make this soup a little more rich. So I've just put a quarter cup of cashews and a half cup of water in my little mini blender here. And then we'll come back to this a little later. We'll blend it up and we'll add it in right at the end, which just makes it a little creamier, a little richer. You don't have to do this 
So we'll come back to this, but that was step one. Those are raw unsalted cashews that have just been soaking for about 15 to 30 minutes. Ooh, this smells so good. Um, so step two is what we're doing now. And at the end of step two, we're adding the garlic. We're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, which is optional too. These are a little spicy, but I like things not hot, hot, but a little spicy is, is fine. So these are just dried red chili pepper crushed flakes. I'm gonna do a teaspoon of regular paprika. This is called California paprika. Whenever I add my dried herbs and spices, I usually add just a tiny bit of water to help it mix in evenly if it's getting kind of dried out in the pan. And I will show this to you um, as I go along here in a sec. And then I'm gonna add two teaspoons of rosemary, fresh rosemary that I've chopped up pretty finely. Oh, that smells good. And this is the rosemary. I just bought this at the store. I don't have rosemary growing in my garden. I know a lot of people do. It grows so easily and so crazy. And I just add a little bit of water while I'm chatting away here. And when I'm done here in a minute, I'm gonna move this to my stove top back here. So I'm gonna turn that on so it can start getting ready. Um, but this is what rosemary looks like when you're buying it at the store. And what you wanna do is just hold the top, not the very top, but kind of near the top and then grab it up there and just pull everything off. And then you'll get your leaves easily. You won't have to pick them off individually. All right. And then once you have them on your cutting board, just gather them up into a little pile and go back and forth with your knife. Okay. All right, so that is step two. Step three is we're gonna add the cauliflower and the four cups of water. Let me show this to you first. Oh, this smells so good. We can't smell it. I know, I shouldn't say that. Um, that's hot, let me get my oven mitts here. All right, so you, I think you can kind of, AJ, can you see that? Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, I'm not, uh. Okay, so I'm just gonna add four cups of water to this. Oh, you know, Kathy says, if you have the Joy Cashew, can you use that instead of chopping cashews? Absolutely. I don't know if you're familiar with Joy, Kathy. I love their product. J-O-I stands for just one ingredient. And they make a, a base, either organic or conventional of cashew and almond to make a really good plant milk with no nothing in it, no emulsifiers or additives or sweeteners. And that when I need uh, plant milk in my soup, instead of even making the milk or buying the milk, I just put a few tablespoons of the joy in and, you know, it's really good. Yes, I have heard of that. In fact, my mom was the one who turned me on to that. And I think I haven't tried it yet, but I saw it at her house. And I think she learned about it from your show. She was so excited, like, look what I have. I mean, she went all out and bought the different kinds and I, sh I should get some for myself. Nice. Right. I prefer the cashew because it's like, I just think I just like cashew better than almond, but they're both good. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, and we're gonna add our cauliflower next. So I have the cauliflower kind of all ready to go here, just in small little florets. This is one head. It's like a good size head, not an extra large, just a regular large good head of cauliflower. So we're gonna put all this in. Doesn't it seem like cauliflower is kind of more in fashion lately? I don't know what it is. Yeah, because, because of, unfortunately, because of things like keto and paleo, because, you know, they're using it instead of a lot of things. Oh, okay. But, you know, I use the green part. That's my favorite part. It's delicious. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. you absolutely can. I remember when I was with you once and you put the whole cauliflower in the Instant Pot. 
Yeah. And you use the green part. Yeah. yeah it's very nutritious and zero waste. I love it. It's very tender when I'll it cooks. I'll do that next time. I forgot about that. So I just kept this part big, just in case anybody was wondering how I do it. Um, you can just cut it from this point, or you can just pick off the little florets like this. Some can be big, some can be smaller. Um, so just pick them off. This way you'll get less of the little white cauliflower uh, debris, I guess. When you cut it with the knife, you get those little, little tiny dusty pieces. All right. But if you could only find like a smallish cauliflower, head of cauliflower, get two. And then when you get down to the end, put that in. If you wanna put this in, you can. I usually don't because it's not cute. It doesn't look good. But you can put it in your stock Ziploc bag or something like that if you want. Okay, so this is step three. We've got our cauliflower, our water, and our we're gonna put in our white beans. Okay, these are cannellini beans that I did use the Instant Pot to make yesterday. I couldn't find any cannellini beans at the store. It was very bizarre. Um, so this is, oh, how much? Um, one can or about one and a half cups. And I'm, you can add these in a little later if you don't want them to get too soft. I'm just gonna add them in now because they did, I did overcook them. I cooked those for about 40 minutes in the Instant Pot. And then I checked them and they were a little still too hard. So I put them back in for five more minutes, which was too much. I should have put them in for two more minutes, but they're still holding together. Actually. Linda Middlesworth says, Kathy, your cookbook, Straight Up Food is an all time favorite for me. Beautiful photos. And I love that it lays flat. Thank you, that testimonial. Um, People just, are saying that your kitchen there reminds them of my old kitchen in Sherman Oaks. Oh, really? Yeah, little kitchens. I love it. Yep. I, I don't, I'm not a fan of um, housework and stuff. So I like little spaces. They're easier to clean. My whole house is kind of little. It's a 1944 built house. It's got two bedrooms, one bath. It's got this little half bath in the garage, which is kind of odd. Um, anyway. Anyway, John says it's a fantastic book, Straight Up Food, because it is usable and spiral bound, well designed. My wife was one of the tasters for the cookbook and loved it. All cookbooks should be like this. Oh, thank you so much, you guys. And I was just going to say when uh, that I saw Linda's article in the National Health Association magazine, Health Science recently, she's got an article in there about um, her dog food company, her vegan dog food company. So that is very cool. I love this smallish community that we have. I mean, I guess I wish it was bigger and more people ate this way, but we all kind of know each other, we kind of run into each other regularly, which I like. Okay. So everything's in here except for the water and the cashews. We'll do that later, but everything else is in there. And so I'm going to move it to my stove top back there so I can, you know what? I'm not even using my close-up camera today. So no, I'm going to move it anyway. So um, Nancy wants to know where she can get the, one of the aprons like you're wearing. Oh, this is a Dr. McDougal apron. Um, it's the food. So if you go to drmcdougal.com, you could, they probably have a store there you can get it from. So I'm going to show this to you. AJ, tell me if you could see this. Okay. Uh, yeah, a little, up, a little higher up and talk. Oh, and talk. Okay. <laughs> Because it only goes to you if you're talking. That's right. So there it is. Um, and the cauliflower florets are a little bit above the waterline, but that's okay. Don't worry. Um, it'll cook down. So I'm going to move this back here. I'm going to put the lid on. And we're going to bring that to a boil on medium high. Actually, what do my instructions say? I have so many recipes now. I don't remember what I say. Bring to a boil then reduce the heat to medium low and cook covered for 10 to 15 minutes. So we'll bring this to a boil and then I'll check on it, give it a stir. And um, once everything in there is soft, the onions, the celery, the carrot, cauliflower, once it's all nice and tender, then we'll bring it back here and finish it up with the cashews and the water 
or if you don't want to do that step, I'll show you how to finish it up anyway, because I'm going to blend a portion of it and then dump it back in so it has a nice creamy base. Great. All right. uh, Jan says, Kathy's book is very user friendly. It lays flat when using it. Great recipes too. Thank you guys. And if you have my book and you love it, please consider leaving a little brief review on Amazon. Even four years later, um, it's still really nice to get reviews. And the more we have, the better, right, AJ? Yeah, I know, you know, I know I've, I got OCD. I never look. I mean, I appreciate when people leave them, but I, I don't want to have to read the bad ones. So I don't oh, look. That's true. Don't leave any bad ones. Just good ones. Well, but people and people do. And you know what's unfair is like if it has nothing like, for instance, I got a, I got a one star review on Unprocessed because the, the, the box was damaged. That has nothing to do with the book. That's an Amazon issue. You know what I'm saying? And so people don't always critique the book. They critique Amazon and then you get penalized for that. Well, you know what, if you caught, there's a place on Amazon where you can contact, um, contact them to have them take that off because they will, because that reflects badly on them. So you can do that. And I can talk to you about that later. Yeah. So I think somebody did, but the point is, is, you know, yeah. I just, I, know. I don't want to see the bad ones. So I don't look at the good ones. That said, I appreciate when people do that. I know it's really important. So thank yeah. you. Let's yeah. see. Vicki says, I've been told not to put cruciferous vegetables like cauliflower and broccoli in my freezer stock bag. I don't know why you've been told that, but guys, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the Nutra milk machine, but it's on sale again, this time for $105 off. Uh, I sent it out to my mailing list last night and you can make broth in it, like raw broth in six minutes. It's I, the video I put up yesterday. You just throw everything in and it's like incredible. Hmm. You know, it seems like I'd heard that too a long time ago about the cruciferous vegetables, and I don't really remember what the issue is. Um, all maybe, right. Maybe Ramses knows. Maybe. There he a lot, they make a lot of broth at True North. Yes, they do. I don't ever make broth. It's funny how we're all different. We have our things and our go-tos. Um, I just use water. So, all right. Um, so I've switched gears a little bit here and while the soup is finishing up, we're going to do the cornbread. So this is called a pumpkin walnut cornbread. And step one is to, so, so cornbread has a little sweetener in it, you know, not overly sweet like dessert, but I'm going to use a few dates and I've done three ounces of dates, which is like anywhere from four to six medjool dates, depending on how big your dates are. And I pitted them and there is one cup of water. You can also use non-dairy milk if you want instead of water. So these have been soaking for a little while, they're pitted. So we will um, come back to those in a second. Also in step one, we're preheating the oven, which I already did to 350. And then normally in this recipe, I use the eight by eight inch baking pan like this. But today I thought I would make muffins instead. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so that is step one. Step two, I'm gonna use my Vitamix and that's a little bit, let me scoot it over a bit. Make sure it's in the frame there. All right. So this is one cup of old fashioned rolled oats. And since I'm gluten-free, I do, I'm not gluten-free personally, but my recipes are gluten-free because I teach at True North Health Center and they are a gluten-free health center. This is boiling. So I'm gonna just take the, the lid off a little bit. I'm gonna just turn it down a tiny bit and maybe I'll give it a stir here. Okay. I'm using my La Creuset soup pot here and it really cooks nice and hot and really well. I'm gonna leave the lid off center just a little bit there. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna make my own flour. That's what I do pretty much all of the time. I did get a comment recently from someone who really doesn't wanna make their own flour. They just want me to use store-bought flour. You can do that if you want. If you wanna buy whole grain oat flour or something, you can do that, but I like just grinding my own as I need it. I don't use flour that much, you know, on special occasions, like I'm thinking these for um, the holiday dinner. 
Um, so I'm just going to grind these oats. It's really easy to do. And then I don't have a lot of flour hanging out that never gets used. So I just make flour as I need it. So I'm just going to grind these until it looks like flour here in the good old Vitamix. I'm just using my regular Vitamix jar. They do have a, um, um, what am I trying to say? A grain jar and you can use that as well. And if you do want to use the store-bought whole grain flour, it's the same measurement, one cup. All right. And then we're going to add to this one and a half cups of cornmeal. And I don't know if you can see that. That's just your regular cornmeal. That isn't a medium grind or a polenta or anything like that. If you can only find medium grind or large grind, which seems really popular now. I don't know why it's so hard to find regular cornmeal. But if you only can find the medium grind or the large grind, just grind it up in your Vitamix and it'll get smaller like that one. So we're putting all the dry ingredients in here. Cornmeal, oat flour. Then next, we're going to add some baking powder, one teaspoon. I'm just using a regular baking powder. It does have sodium in it. If you want to get a sodium free baking powder, um, they do they do have that. It's on my website, straightupfood.com. And then we're going to do a half teaspoon, oh, three quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Um, okay. Da, 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 da. So we're going to do three of these one quarter measurements. So they will rise up a little bit. All right. And then I like to use a whisk at this point. You can use a fork as well. Whenever you're going to be doing adding wet ingredients to dry ingredients, you want to thoroughly whisk the dry ingredients so that leavening, that baking soda and baking powder gets evenly distributed among the dry stuff here. Okay. All right, so we're gonna, whoop, I didn't do a good job, a little bit more. Okay. Let me turn down this soup just a hair because it's boiling away like mad. Okay, so that is step two. Now we're gonna go back to the Vitamix jar and we're gonna do our wet ingredients. So we're gonna add our, there it is, the water in the dates to the blender. And I like to blend this first before I add the pumpkin, just to make sure that the dates get nice and thoroughly blended. And these are the kind of dates I use, the Del Rio Organic Medjool dates. You can use any brand that you like. I just find that the, this brand is consistently good and their dates aren't all dried out and funky looking. Just make sure that you take this little pit out because these are very rock hard and you don't want it ending up in here. So um, just make sure that you get those pits out. If you do get one in there, just stop, pour this in a bowl, find the pit, Take it out, put it back in the blender. Okay, so now I'm gonna to add to the blender, the pumpkin puree. And this kind of acts as flavor, um, kind of holds things together, and it kind of helps in place of oil too, because it provides moistness. So this is just the Whole Food brand 365 organic pumpkin puree. You don't want a pumpkin pie mix has a lot of sugar added to it. So just get the pumpkin puree. And this is a 15 ounce can and we're gonna use the whole 
can. And pumpkin purees come in different colors. Some are darker, some are lighter. If you wanna make your own pumpkin puree, you can do that. Just Google how to make pumpkin puree from scratch. All right. Now we're gonna re-blend or blend some more. get my tamper because it's a little bit on the thick side. The tamper just kind of helps it. Ah! Hold on. It helps it move along. Now bring your dry ingredients back and we're going to pour all the wet into the dry. And you can make these muffins ahead of time. You can freeze them. They freeze really well. And there's options. You can do just the straight cornmeal muffins. You can add some corn kernels to them. Today we're going to add some walnuts. Some people like to add blueberries to their cornmeal muffins, cornbread muffins. Some people add cranberries, dried cranberries. I think fresh cranberries might be a little too tart. I'm not sure about that. And then I also envision the muffins turning pink and red. So I didn't want to go the cranberry route. Some people add the dried cranberries, but they're often um, soaked in sugar. So I don't use those. Yeah, you know, the dried cranberries sometimes have oil in them too. Oh yeah, just like the raisins do sometimes. It's like, so they won't stick together or so they'll look nice and shiny. I don't know. Um, it's weird. It is weird. Okay, so now we've got the puree in there and the dry stuff. We're just gonna mix it together. Whoa, that looks good. Um, yeah, and people are saying they love the broth, uh, Engine 2 broth, but I'm trying to get people to not buy so much packaging. And that's why if you get the nut for milk machine or use the recipe in my book in the Instant Pot, you don't have to pay. Because isn't box broth like four bucks a box usually? It's expensive. You have the packaging. And I also think it tastes kind of funny. I know. I, I don't care for it. I, I mean, and, and if a recipe is spiced correctly, you really can, you can use just water. You don't need broth, but I, you should check out the video I did yesterday. That was so cool. You just throw everything in the machine and push the button oh, for three like minutes. That. And then you add the water for three minutes and it's like, it was like, whoa, that was so easy. Yeah. It doesn't have to be difficult. So here's the batter. Um, if it's a little on the thick side, you can add a little bit of water or non-dairy milk to it. I don't like it quite so thick. So I'm just gonna add a little more. And then I'm gonna put some walnuts in this. If you don't wanna do nuts, you can leave the nuts out or you can use a different kind of nut. You know, I'm gonna use my eight inch chef's knife to chop. It's a little, when you have a pile like this, it's a little easier to have a longer knife um, rather than a shorter knife. So um, these are just walnuts. You can use another kind of nut. I think pecans would be really good too. Or I know a lot of people don't do nuts and seeds, so you can just leave this out, but then you'd have to change the name. <laughs> just call it pumpkin cornbread, I guess. And that still would be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But when it's the holidays, I usually break out a little bit more nuts. I'll do the, the muffins or breadsy stuff, which I don't normally do. Uh, where I teach at True North Health Center, they don't really do bread. I think the most bread thing they do there is corn tortillas. <laughs> um, but I'm a little, I do a little bit more bread stuff in my cookbook. I like carrot cake and uh, poppy seed cake, and I'll make some oatmeal cookies. So once in a while. All right, so I just do kind of a rough 
chop here because I like to sense that nut when I'm biting into the muffin. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick all this up and that was a half cup of walnuts. If you were adding in some corn as well, I might do a little bit, maybe like a quarter cup walnuts. I'm gonna add a little more water and um, maybe a quarter to a half cup of corn. Okay. My neighbors are getting pumpkin walnut cornbread muffins today. Okay. Or I can freeze some too. Hey, maybe I should just freeze all these and have them on Christmas. Okay, so I am using a muffin pan today instead of my eight by eight inch pan. And let me just check on this soup. All right, this looks really good. And I'm doing the thing that I always do when I'm teaching a class. And that is I overboil my soup or stew because I'm always nervous that it's not gonna get done by the time I need it to be done. And so sometimes I, too much of the water um, cooks off. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit of water. Okay, but it's looking real good. Real good. All right. Now, this makes 12 muffins. I use culinary parchment large baking cups. It says large. They're not really large. They're just your regular size um, baking liners. And you want to use these because if you use, do I still have these down here? I wonder if you use, I bought these so long ago these little cute cupcake liners. I don't even know why I still keep these. You know why I keep these? Um, I think it's because if you want a cute liner like this for, you know, like a little kid's birthday party or something. Um, I kept these because I will ah, put them on the outside, but you definitely want that parchment paper liner on the inside. And you can put these on the outside now, or you can do it later. Um, but I guess that's why I didn't toss those because I thought, oh, I could still, I could still use them. All right. So with a soup spoon, just fill each one up. What I do is I go around first and I put, whoop, you want to try to keep batter off the pan because if it's on top here, it'll just burn and crust up on there. It'll be hard to wash. So try to be a little bit careful. So I go around and I put a, a spoonful into each liner. And then after that, I will go back and even them all out, put a little bit more in each one. Okay. And let me see if I had any notes about this. Um, I already talked about that, talked about that. Yep, I think I talked about everything. So I'm gonna finish um, doing these off camera later, but then just go back, put a little bit more on. If you wanna kind of help, um, there's no oil in these, so they're not gonna get this nice even, I'll show you, um, top as, as the ones that do have oil. So if you wanna kind of help them and smooth the top a little, you can do that. So I'm not gonna do all that and take the time. I will show you the ones that I already have done though. Okay, so here are the muffins that I have done. They have a really nice color to them. If you want um, a taller muffin, you can just add some more batter and maybe make 10 muffins instead of 12. And then I cooked these for 25 minutes. If you make yours taller, maybe 25 to 30 minutes, just kind of keep an eye on them. Um, but these, these look really good. See how the parchment paper liners come right off. And there you go. They're cooked all the way through. Nice big nuts in there. And again, if you want square cornbread, use the eight by eight inch 
pan. All right, so let me move this out of the way. All right, so let's check on our soup. Let me get my trivet out here. All right, and my oven gloves. All right, so I'm gonna take this off the stove top, bring it back over here. And it is boiling away. All righty. So you can eat this just like this, and I will show this to you. Um, or you can do this last step that I'm gonna show you um, where you can blend a little bit of it. And I'm gonna use the Vitamix again. All right, so let me hold this up so you can see it right now. This is if you don't really want a super creamy base, you just want it nice and chunky. So AJ, can you see that? Doesn't that look good? It looks fantastic. Yeah. All right, so if we wanna do the creamy base, we are gonna get our spare Vitamix jar here. And we're gonna put in, uh, let me just check my instructions. Okay, so I'm gonna blend. So this is where the cashews come in. Again, this is optional. This just makes it a little richer. Sometimes I do this if I'm having company or something. I usually eat very non-rich stuff, but um, you can also, this is a quarter cup cashews with a half cup of water. You can also do a couple cashews. I mean. You don't have to do the full amount that I'm doing, or you can do more if you want. And if you don't wanna do this, or you don't like cashews, use another kind of nut or seed, or you could just put a little non-dairy milk, like a unsweetened soy milk in there too, just to add a little lighter color and a little um, richness. Now, I had this in this small, my small blender here, which I love using, but I'm wondering if I should just put it in there. I don't know if it'll be enough, um, whatever. Let's just see what happens. Let's just put it in the big one because this will do, this is slightly more powerful than this. So I want it as smooth as possible. So let's see if it grabs on here. Okay. Okay, that worked okay. So now I'm gonna take about three cups of the soup, and this is a half cup ladle. So I'm gonna do six of these. Two, three, four, five, six. You wanna get the broth and the veggies, everything in there. And we're just gonna blend this till it's pretty smooth. Oh, that looks so good. That looks, I don't know if you can see that, that looks like cheese sauce. All right, so we're gonna pour this back into our soup pot. And I think I have used all my spatulas, so let me just use this. All right. And then mix, stir that in. And if you don't want so much of a creamy base like I did with the three cups, you can do two cups or one cup. It's up to you. But this will give the very creamy, if you saw this picture on my website or um, something like that, you, you'll see that it looks like this. It's a very creamy base. It kind of looks like clam chowder a little bit. Okay. So when I have a real pretty soup like this, I like to use these wide soup bowls or maybe they're called pasta dishes. And you could, Garnish this with a little black pepper, or let people put on their own pepper if they want. I think that would go well with this. Ooh, that looks so good. All right. So, Sue tuned in late and wanted to know how you would adapt it to the instant pot. Um, 
And Gina wants to know if she can come over and wash the dishes and then she gets to eat. Oh, I would love it if someone washed the dishes. All right, can you see that? So it's a nice light color. Um, you know what would be good in here too is like a potato or two, like a russet potato or a Yukon gold potato that would add even more hardiness, but the beans are in here. So that helps. All right. Diane says, do the recipes in your book show the calories? Yes, there is a chart, big chart, many pages chart in the back of the book um, that has all the nutritional information, like a lot, like the sodium, the calcium, the serving size, how many calories for that serving size, the protein, the fat, the everything, it's in there. Well, but we don't um, do serving and, sizes, right, Kathy? Pardon me? We don't really believe in serving sizes when we eat this way. No, I mean, I'm not saying you have to eat this amount of serving size, but you have to have a serving size in order to give the nutritional breakdown. So for one cup of this soup, it's just a, a guideline. It's not saying you have to eat one cup or whatever, um, but it just kind of gives you an idea. And to answer your question about the Instant Pot, let me, let me look at the recipe real here, uh, real quick here. Um, I think this actually could work really well in the Instant Pot and I don't, AJ, you tell me, like if we put the onion, the carrots, the celery, and the um, cauliflower in with the water and the spices, um, how long would that take? It would I mean, with the beans already cooked, I mean, it might take five minutes only. Yeah, that's what I think, five minutes. Um, if your beans were already cooked, would that overcook your beans though for five minutes or do you think it would be okay? I don't know. Oh, you could, you know, if the beans are, they, yeah, you're right. They could get mushy or you could just stir them in at the end because they're already cooked. Yeah. That way the beans won't disintegrate. And if you have uncooked beans, you, they're going to need a lot more than five minutes. So you don't want to put those in. Um, yeah. Just add the beans at the end and then do this blending stuff at the end. Yeah. I think that could totally work like five minutes. I don't know how the water adjustment would go. I use four cups of water, but I think in the Instant Pot, you need a little less water. So I'm not sure how much, somewhere between three and four, maybe um, you'd have to play around with it. Um, if anybody wants to be my Instant Pot recipe converter, you can email me. That's just one of those things I know I should do, but I just don't do it. Uh, and people ask me about it. Um, so that is it, you guys. We're all done. What time is it? Oh, good timing. Yeah, you got in a very good time. Thank you. And then thanks for coming to the Christmas show. It's going to be great. Yeah, that'll be fun. So, yeah. all right. Thank you guys oh, so much. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Kathy Fisher. And guys, please come back tomorrow when... Oh, we have another cooking demo tomorrow. See, guys, what I'm doing is I, I you, I heard from you, Lisa, and people that write in that you really, it's not that you don't like the doctor lectures, but especially around the holidays, you really like the cooking demos. So we're doing as many as possible, also featuring all the chefs that participated in the November special, as well as the December. So tomorrow we have another wonderful cooking demo with Tammy Kramer from Nutbag Notebook. We're going a half hour later tomorrow at 1130 because I'm interviewing Dr. Goldhammer for the weight loss summit in the morning, and I just need a little break in between. And I think she's, she's either making, I think she's making her famous shepherd's pie. So thanks for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. And thank you, Kathy Fisher. It's always wonderful to watch you cook. Thank you so much. And say hi to all the kitties. I will. Okay. Bye-bye. Right,